Hi guys, it is a fine spring day here. And the collapse of global industrial civilization here on, it is now Sunday afternoon. I think that's May 16th, 2021, somewhere around there. And I am uh, taking a break from the garden. We have the tomatoes, peppers, and potatoes in the garden. And my back needs a break, so I'm going to take a break by coming on here to the mainstream media. And, and, and guys, I hate to beat a dead horse, but I am going to do one more. I think this is the third chronicle of the collapse that I've done on this, uh, on this basic story. And, and that is about the declining birth rates here in this country and on this planet because I see this uh, story uh, as shaping up to be one of the biggest stories uh, over the next decade, if not the century. The, the one piece of good news, the one piece of good news that the birth rates in this country and on this planet are declining. They, if, 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 the one tiny shred of hopium uh, that offers any hope for continued life on this planet uh, is just being assaulted in, in the mainstream media. And the, the, I think this is what Marshall McLuhan might have been referring to when he made that uh, very uh, obscure uh, statement about the medium being the message. It's kind of a cousin to it how the one ray of good news just unequivocally in the in the mainstream media and probably the alternative media, the left-wing media, the right-wing media, it makes no difference outside of this tiny little section of this little section of almost the dark web known as the Doomosphere. Uh, absolutely celebrating uh, the decline of birth rates, uh, just the tsunami of propaganda that we are going to be hit with uh, from the, you know, from the mainstream media, which of course is, is you know, the mouthpiece for the uh, for the corporate, the global corporatocracy, and this is j just the latest piece of evidence uh, that how the corporate controlled media, the corporate controlled governments uh, on this entire planet are, are in absolute freak out mode that the population is declining. This is the latest evidence. I anyone trying to tell me the, you know, the, the, the granddaddy of all uh, conspir wacky conspiracy theories about a depopulation agenda. Uh, th this is just the latest evidence, the very last thing that the, quote, New World Order, uh, which I define as the global corporatocracy, which is pretty much just the newest version of the old world order, the last thing on their agenda is to depopulate this planet. There is nothing in it for the new world order to depopulate this planet. There, it's the, the goal of the new world order, the global corporatocracy, is to see how many humans they can pack on to a planet to buy their planet-eating crap. The entire model is 100% dependent on an ever-increasing population on a finite planet. Infinite growth, infinite economic growth, and infinite population growth, I guess. You know, as Alex Jones uh, once famously said, he sees no reason this planet could not support a quadrillion people, every one of them 
owning a sports car and a motorboat. And this is, uh, th th this is going to be, you know, cradle to grave hammering that trying to get people to breed. And, and, and nowhere with the possible little, as we're going to show in here, uh, the, the, the only tiny, tiny little nod they're going to make uh, to the doomosphere is about climate change, how fewer people means fewer negative effects on the climate. Uh, the only reason they're doing that nod uh, it, it, it is, you know, that is part of their, you know, bright green lie uh, about, you know, all of this renewable energy and crap. That's a whole nother thing. Of course, whenever they make this little nod, uh, to climate change, they do not mention the other eight planetary boundaries other than climate change, uh, that adding more and more people. Uh, you will not hear the environment spoken about uh, other than that little BS nod to, uh, to the climate, the environment has nothing to do with it. It is the economy, stupid. Uh, that's all the mainstream media cares about when there is any threat to the new world order, to the global corporatocracy, you better believe that they are going to roll this out as a, uh, as a threat to the economy. And 99% uh, and of the people uh, reading this crap uh, are going to swallow this crap. Uh, it, it is unadulterated BS. Uh, all, all of this crap about declining birth rates. We should be, this planet should be cheering in the streets. And so anyway, I'm going to read one more article without trying to repeat too much. This is from an outfit that I've read from, and again, used to have some, uh, some respect for until this morning, Axios, A-X-I-O-S, Axios, right here on Yahoo News this morning, you know, joining the chorus about how America's slowing population growth puts limits on its future. Yes, the U.S. is sharply declining rate of population growth threatens to put an expiration date on a country built around a vision of endless reinvention. That, that, is, a, that, that is one of the most uh, creative words. We need to change that uh, to endless growth on a planet with an end date. Uh, built around an expiration date on a country built around a vision of endless reinvention. Okay, here is the big picture, according to Axios and Yahoo News, I guess. The big picture... And how many times have we heard this? Fewer people means fewer workers to support an aging population, fewer innovators with new ideas, <clears throat> less economic growth, and more of one thing, political fights over a shrinking pie. Well, there are, there's, hopefully there will be more of several things, such as more of our fellow earthlings surviving because of this. 
uh, there will be less uh, with every one less person on this planet, there are that many fewer threats to every other life form on the planet. Nowhere mentioned that, uh, are you going to read in this article any other article uh, about how our fellow earthlings are cheering on the decline of the human birth rate. Okay, how many times have we now heard the great news about uh, how the, the Census Bureau uh, reported that between 2010 and 2020, the U.S. population grew at its slowest rate since the Great Depression and the second slowest rate in any decade since the country's founding. Uh, and then, of course, as I've mentioned twice now, this new CDC report indicates the U.S. birth rate has fallen for the sixth straight year, with births falling precipitously in December around when any babies conceived during the start of the corona panic would have been born. But uh, as we're, as any doomer is hoping that this prediction that 500,000 fewer babies will be born in this country because of the corona panic, uh, we will see how that plays out. And due to all this, uh, the fertility rate uh, defined as the number of live births per 1,000 women aged 15 to 44 fell from 64.1 births per 1,000 women in 2010 to 55.8 births per women in 2020. That is in part a result of positive changes like the sharp drop in teenage pregnancies, but it also means Americans are not having enough babies to keep the country's population growing by births alone. So what is the impact? This is the impact on humans because you, you are never going to hear except with this little loaded nod to climate change, you are never going to hear about the positive impacts on this planet by reducing the number of cancer cells, by you reduce the number of the biggest threats to life on Earth, which is the number of humans, you have positive impacts on the rest of uh, the, the, the planet, never, never mentioned. Um, okay, the impact, according to the mainstream uh, way of thinking, countries with falling population growth and eventual population decline face serious economic, political, and even cultural challenges. Fewer births combined with longer lifespans means fewer productive young workers to balance those in retirement. As a result, J.P. Morgan senior economist Jesse Edgerton notes, there will be excess capital sloshing around the global economy, keeping interest rates low and making it more difficult to save for retirement. Okay, you know, here, this is, this is one of the greatest flip-flops I have ever heard. Is, I guess this is, an, how about this for one sentence? Um, while a slower growing population puts less pressure on the climate, new ideas come from new people. And fewer people means fewer sources for those new ideas. 
that leads to a slowdown in innovation at the very moment when we need it most, as Stanford economist Charles Jones argued in a recent paper, and there's links to all of this. Uh, or, you know, guys, of, of, of all of the BS reasons to support uh, an ever-growing population that if we have, you, you know, 10 billion people on the planet instead of 8 billion on people on the planet, that one of those 2 billion, you know, in the, in the margins, it is one of those people that are going to come up with the idea how to save the planet from all of those extra people. It is humans that cause every problem on the planet that need to be solved. So the best way to solve a problem by of too many humans on a planet is to breed more and more humans so one of them can think of a way to save the planet from all of the other, uh, just your basic clueless moron, uh, wage slave consumers uh, going about their daily lives destroying a planet. Uh, this crap, this Stanford economist, you know, that the, George Carlin has a routine on this. Uh, you know, he was calling out this crap uh, when was it, George? 30 years ago, uh, you know, poking uh, fun at, at this absurd notion. Your kid is not going to save the planet. Your clueless moron little kid is going to do everything in his or her power intentionally or unintentionally to destroy the planet. Uh, anyway, you can probably Google that George Carlin uh, routine talking about this very notion, this unadulterated BS uh, about we need more people to solve the problem of too many people on a planet. And of course, uh, as I've mentioned ten times already, and this ran in a thousand and others, while a slower growing population puts less pressure on the climate, we need to change the word climate to planet. It makes no difference if humans had zero effect or not on the climate. The climate virtually uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to agree with sound, sounding like book hermit. I am not. This is in no way to be interpreted as a climate change denying comment. But if climate had nothing to do uh, with the equation, if there were only eight planetary boundaries that too many humans are uh, taking this planet down, we would destroy the planet. This is not an issue of climate. That is one-ninth of the story. Eight-ninths of the story. What is that? Eighty-five percent of the story, somewhere around there, is nowhere ever going to be mentioned. Uh, in, in, in any of this. Uh, okay. Getting back to Axios. Put those two trends together and you have a formula for corrosive generational conflict and a country in long-term decline which is exactly what a 2019 Pew survey about Americans' attitudes toward the future found. Uh, and then they quote this, uh, this is a public policy fellow at Stanford's Hoover Institution named Lan He Chen, uh, quote, I think for many Americans it's not 
a completely boundless dream anymore. And so the way we're going to stop the collapse of the American empire is to pack more people into the U.S. And which brings us uh, coming up to this next, uh, what they're building towards. So what is the context? Slowing population growth is a reality through most of the developed world, including China, where government data released this week showed the average annual population growth over the past 10 years was just 0.53%, the slowest in decades. I've already had a, a rant about that good news. Yes, but the U.S. has one option to keep its population growing that China and many other countries lack. And here we go. This is the other big story that is the, 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 what's going on behind the scenes. So what do you think they're talking about? They are talking about immigration just like what I, um, what that last story I just covered a couple of days ago, cheering on opening borders here in the U.S., uh, and particularly they're talking about the U.S. and Europe, uh, opening the borders here to, uh, you know, to Latin American uh, and immigrants and opening the borders, just throwing open the borders in Europe to the, what is it, 60 million uh, sub-Saharan Africans wanting to get in there. And let me read this and then I will uh, make a, uh, about this immigration stuff, because you can see where at least the mainstream media is going with this. Uh, that you are going to see more and more push to just completely let in the, the hordes, as it were. Uh, immigration has always been key to U.S. population growth absent our foreign-born citizens and residents, the country would have some 40 million fewer people. There would be 40 million fewer people uh, than, than the 334 million we have already. And cities like New York and Chicago would have shrunk. <clears throat> the demand to come to the U.S. is still huge. Data from Gallup indicates 42 million people in Latin America and the Caribbean alone would move to the U.S. if they could. And do not forget the average age of immigrants is more than seven years younger than the median American, which means they are in a demographic position to bolster the world for decades and have more children of their own. So what we're seeing is the mainstream media and the global corporatocracy cheering on bringing in, what, 42 million uh, Latin Americans uh, into this country uh, and encouraging them to have more children. Again, I'm going to come back to this. I am biting my tongue until it bleeds. Uh, but what is the catch? According to uh, the mainstream media, I'm going to come back with my uh, Collapse Chronicles immigration policy at the end of this. The catch. While the U.S. had a net migration of more than one million people a year leading up to 2016, that number fell 
to an estimated 595,000 in 2019, even before corona panic uh, led border controls closed the spigot even further. A report this year from the National Immigration Forum found increasing net immigration levels by at least 37 percent, approximately an additional 370,000 immigrants per year would prevent the U.S. from falling into a, quote, demographic deficit. So what we're seeing here is they're recommending 370,000 more uh, immigrants from Latin America should be uh, brought into the U.S. to save the American empire. So what to watch? The progress of President Biden's immigration proposals, which would expand legal immigration while creating a pathway to citizenship for millions of un documented immigrants. The Biden administration also has proposed a number of family-friendly policies in its American Families Plan, including enhanced child tax credits and free preschool for children age three to four, you know, which is this is uh, rewarding, just flat out paying people uh, to, to have kids, which is another way of penalizing people who do not have kids, which of course is the completely backwards, the way it should be. Uh, while Americans have consistently said they desire more children than they actually have, and some demographers suggest the corona panic baby bust could be reversed as prospective parents have the children they put off earlier. Uh, Long-term trends around declining marriage rates and delayed childbearing will be difficult to reverse. So the bottom line the bottom line, according to Axios, Yahoo News, and the mainstream media, the bottom line, no country in the world has figured out a reliable way to induce citizens to have more children over the long term, which means the U.S. can live up to its self-conception as a nation of immigrants or face a shrinking future. Okay, uh, guys, this will be the biggest test. We will see if this will be the first video uh, since Collapse Chronicles started monetizing last week that the, uh, you know, they check my videos to see if they are advertiser friendly. So I am going to put a big threat probably to the 35 cents uh, I'm going to make uh, off of this video and give the Collapse Chronicles uh, immigration policy. So some people would listen to what I just said and just automatically consider me anti-immigrant and probably some, uh, if I have any little lefty snowflakes on this channel, which I don't think I do, uh, they probably have me pegged as, you know, a Donald Trump voting, Alex Jones cheering, uh, right wing, uh, conspiratard, whatever. So if there's anything that I, any comment I have made or tone of voice suggesting that I am anti-immigrant, uh, I want to uh, set the record st straight that I am not necessarily anti-immigrant because I look, uh, I look 
at the world as a planet. I don't pay, I mean, it's 8 billion people on a planet, whether the people are in, uh, I, I don't know, we'll use Honduras, or whether they're in the U.S. people are people, and, and they're taking down the planet. And my guess is a Honduran living in Honduras is probably a bigger threat to the fellow earthlings in Honduras than if we let them in here to the U.S., then they would be a bigger threat to our fellow earthlings in the U.S. So from a planetary perspective, I don't care where the humans are, okay? Uh, we need a planet-wide. This has nothing to do with the color of somebody's skin, uh, be it brown or black or whatever. I've got somebody coming up and saying, what we need to do, I need to make this quick, the Collapse Chronicles immigration plan is to sterilize every single immigrant moving from one country into another on this planet every single Latin American coming into this, good, they turned around, every single Latin American coming into this country of any age needs to be sterilized. Every single sub-Saharan African coming to Europe, as you know, needs to be sterilized. It's get in line, vasectomies on the left, tubal ligations on the right. This means all of your kids need to be sterilized. You get sterilized welcome aboard. And this goes the other way. If any, uh, any gringo uh, in the U.S. wants to move to Honduras, they should be required to be sterilized uh, if they're moving from the U.S. to Honduras or Nicaragua or wherever. Same goes if anybody from England wants to move to Somalia. The Somalian government should require that, uh, that English person to be sterilized as a matter of, uh, of getting uh, an, an, immigration, an immigration visa. It's that simple. Every country in the world, it should be standard operating procedure to sterilize uh, anybody moving into the uh, moving in to the country. Uh, th this is not racism. This is not eugenics. This is saving a planet from the single biggest thing. It is uh, to stop the birth rate. Uh, but of course, as you've heard on the m mainstream media, they don't want to lower the birth rate of immigrants. They want to flood uh, the U.S. with Latin Americans and get them breeding. They want to flood Europe with Sub-Saharan Africans and get them making more babies. Uh, this is going to be the dominant paradigm. And anybody who blows the whistle on this story uh, is going to be accused, you know, of everything I just said, of being a eugenicist, uh, a minimally a racist and probably a eugenicist. And this, this whole concept of eugenics, these people throwing this word around, they have no clue what the word eugenics means. A eugenicist does not uh, champion uh, every single race on this planet being sterilized, creating a master race of zero humans on the planet. So uh, anyway, we're going to see if the... Uh, what the uh, advertiser, the YouTube advertisers think of this Collapse Chronicles rant. But I have got to wrap this up because I need to get out there and plant, uh, what's next? The onions and garlic. And you need to go get a mousey like that. I highly suggest you get out there 
and plant your onions and garlic before some uh, Honduran plants them for you. Couldn't resist that. Bye guys.